Hi guys! Building a strong and reliable network connection between two PoE switches that are located over 100 meters using the Cat5e or Cat6 cable might seem like a very difficult task. But with the right tool, it's actually easier than what you think. So today in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the PoE extender to connect two switches together. And please like and subscribe our channel, Fast Cabling. If you have any trouble with your system design, please feel free to contact us through the link down in the description box below. Send us a diagram or some simple drawing, and we will be ha more than happy to solve your problem for you. Now, PoE switch is designed to supply both power and network connectivity to the devices that support PoE technology. It can eliminate the need for separate power supply, simplifying the deployment and managing of the network devices. PoE switches come in variety of sizes and configuration. So make sure you choose the suitable PoE switch for your application. Now, let's move on to the demonstration board and let's see how to set up our connection to So here we are in front of the demonstration board and behind us is the whole setup. So why do we need to add the PoE extender in between the PoE switches? Because we all know the PoE has a limitation of 328 feet. That's about 100 meter. The PoE has a limitation because the power that transmitted over the ethernet cable decreases as the distance between the power source and the edge device increases. The decrease in power is due to the resistance in the cable and the power loss that occur during the transmission of electrical energy. So if the distance is too great, that means your device will not receive enough power and data to operate reliably. That's why we need the PoE extender to boost up the power and the data transmission. Today, our case is using the 1-in, 2-out PoE extender. It can supply up to two PoE devices at the same time. And it works by receiving the power and data through the Ethernet cable from the PoE source and then regenerating and transmitting the signal to another Ethernet cable that connects it to the other switch. Now, without saying, let's do the connection together. Let's do the connection from the beginning. This is the router to provide the main data. This is an NVR and monitor. After we connect it with the IP camera, the image will show up. So first, I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect the router with the NVR. And then using another short patch cord here to connect our main network to the PoE switch. You can plug in any of the port. This is a 100 meter Cat6 Ethernet cable. So let's plug it into the PoE switch. The indicated lights are on and it's already powered up. Let's move on to the PoE extender. This is a one in, two out PoE extender, but today we're only going to use one of them. Let's plug in the Ethernet cable here in the input port. And then, using the other cable, this is also 100 meter, to plug in to the output port. You can see the indicated light is on. It's getting power and data through the single Ethernet cable. And the second one, we can just plug it in if we don't want to use it. And this tool, I already took out the gland and the neck for a quick installation. Another 100 Ethernet cable here. And this is our second switch. And you can see the indicator light is on. It's already been powered up. Let's use the Ethernet cable here to connect to our PoE switch and see if it works. I'm going to install two devices. First is the SS point, and second, I'm going to use a short patch cord here to connect with an IP camera. Let's plug it in. The indicated lights are on, 
And now let's see if there's any image come up. Just give it a few seconds to work. Here we go. And you can see my hand waving here. This is a live video. And you can see the whole setup is done and both switches are working perfectly. Here are a few more tips for you. There are different types of PoE extender. This one in 2L PoE extender is rated for 1 gigabit per second. Since the extender works as the bottleneck in the network, it can only transmit data that at its maximum speed. So make sure you choose the extender that can support the speed that you need. Also, choose a pure copper cable like the Cat5e or Cat6 because copper offers a higher conductivity compared to other materials. So it can ensure the signal is transmitted effectively and accurately. Last but not least, the extender is IP67 waterproof. Use a wrench to fasten the, wrench, the neck and the gland so you can prevent water or dust to get in. Also, avoid adding PoE switch in the middle because that will become a daisy chain. And we want to avoid daisy chain because daisy chain will generate latency. And here's a video on how to avoid daisy chain. And thank you so much for watching today. And I'll see you next time.